Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Youth Squad Prospects 4 with Morecambe. And today we've got four massive games. We're going to finish 2018 with two massive games against top of the table Tranmere Rovers. And Eric and Gary when Gary is going to visit his former side in Colchester. And then to start 2019 we've got a game in the 1st of January against Carlisle United where everything begun and uh, we're going to face Perrying's crew Alexandra as well. Start of the window, maybe some ins and outs, we'll have to wait and see. But for now, let's get right into the action. Unfortunately the first two games of this episode will have to be post comp and uh, just the two most meaningful to me as well unfortunately it is boxing day this one we're away against top of the table Tranmere Rovers and uh, we have to put out a weakened side simply because most of the players not one but two very good youtubers are doing this series with Tranmere Rovers go check them out in the top right of your screen they are the touring bus and SJH Sports we're going to go away to Prenton Park on Boxing Day. They are top of the table by the single point. Two points ahead, third place, Macclesfield. And uh, I was not expecting much. It was the reserve side after all. And it was top of the table. But look at that for a strike. Thomas O'Burn. This guy is a long shot machine. He can pick out the top corner like it's nothing. It's unbelievable the consistency of the lad. And uh, right into the side net and keeper had no chance. What a start. It's his second belter in League 2. What a start against top of the table. Tranmere Rovers. Well after that brilliant start we meant to follow it up. Corny here on the ball. Santoro combines then Svensson takes a touch to set himself. And finishes it yet again from the edge of the box this time. The finesse shots are so OP it's unreal. And uh, what a start indeed. After struggling to find our groove throughout the whole season. We go away on Boxing Day. And smash Tranmere Rovers inside the first 20 minutes. The game seemed like it was already over. Very good finish by Svensson indeed. And what a goal, what a way to introduce yourself to the fans. My goodness. It was disgustingly good football being played at Prenton Park. And uh, of course we try to keep up the pace. And uh, Tranmere Rovers are going to try the kickoff glitch again. And you already know what's going to happen. Stockton scores, it's 2-1. Crazy 7 minutes of the game. Wow, I was speechless. The commentary was on point. Why did it have to be post come? Oh. Anyways, we are still in the lead and we're going on the break here. O'Burn manages to slip it through to Santoro. Sets himself the finishing. Just not quite there, unfortunately. And that was it for the first half. Very good first 45 minutes in my eyes. And I decided to switch the formation, go ultra defensive. Brought on the scout for you to start the Fresn. Just to keep Tranmere Rovers busy. Then we've got Baker here on the wing early in the second half. He's going to whip it in. Look at the Fresn. Good header. Bounces back to Santoro. And that is 3-1. The first header should have gone in. Bit of a lucky break to deflect straight to Santoro and uh, he manages to put it home very good move a bit lucky there with the bounce again but nonetheless deserved due to our performance regardless very good goal very proud of the team at this moment as you'd expect and uh, almost scored a fourth here uh, thanks to the Tranmere defender and uh, another very good header and an orthodox save there by the keeper Svensson goes off, he was the final substitution, great game and uh, as he went we lost control of the game and Tranmere Rovers get one back just before the 90th minute after that brilliant work by the winger and the crossing is absolutely pinpoint. That was it, it was too late for Tranmere Rovers to come back. Thank God because we definitely deserve the three points. If there is a game where we deserve to bring all three points with us 
it was definitely this game game of the season by an absolute mile and uh, you can see there on the stats we actually battled Tranmere at possession which was absolutely fantastic Santoro with the man of the match 9.3 in my eyes I think Svensson made the most impact deserved nonetheless and we've cost the Tranmere the top spot as you're gonna about to see here just down to third wow I've never struggled throughout the season like this and then go on Boxing Day and smash top of the table. And then second game against Colchester United. Big game as well. This time the first team was there with a few of the backup players that didn't play last time. And it's a welcome back for Eric and Gadwin and Gadby to the Colchester Community Stadium where he scored so many goals. And uh, we wanted to be as good as we were in the Tranmere game. Chevalier here on the wing. Great face shot. Good work there. And the ball is in. It's an own goal. It was a shame because it was a very good move. But we deserved the goal nonetheless. We were the better team to start the game. We came flying out of the traps again. And uh, the defender there just about beats Chumacero to the ball. He deserved the goal but unfortunately he didn't get it that time. There's still time on the clock for him to do so. Again, great move. The long shot, a bit lucky, but then again, justice was served this time. It was offside. And uh, it is half time. 1 0 to Morecambe. Much better than the last time, where we got beat by the only goal of the game by Courtney Senior. Three changes O'Byrne, Pokorny, and the Fresn were on. All played in the last game as well. And I was hoping they'd keep us floating in the second half. Great move by Pokorny. The ball is through to Dylan Brennan, and he somehow misses it. And then check this out for a move by Colchester United. They are one of the best teams in this division, so that is to be expected. Good ball by Dickinson, and Michael Mandron makes his pay for not putting enough chances away. And uh, Colchester are back in the game, out of absolutely nowhere. Ten minutes from time, we had to dig deep, try and get a winner, but unfortunately it wasn't the case we come away this time with a disappointing 1-1 draw and it's a goal and a point apiece for both sides colchester had the chances but i always felt comfortable in that game and uh, ridiculously enough courtney senior spoils the party yet again by getting the man of the match he is tending to be our little nemesis as we head back to livecom hopefully i won't get any more trouble with capturing the audio but unfortunately the first part of this video and the Palmer episode mostly will also have to be post come which is a shame but now with the audio back we can finally carry on with this episode I've been waiting for two days to record this just to figure out the problem that I had it was all because I didn't update the software and they didn't notify me of it crazy Anyways, first game of 2019, it's a new year, and with some new software. Let's try and keep that good run of form at the end of 2018 from the start of this episode. Starting line up on screen is the second team side with just a few first teamers, Krav, McNeil and Santoro. Hopefully we can pick up a result against Carlisle United. Our confidence is sky high after two very impressive results. EFL League 2 action here live from the Globe Arena and we host the first team of youth squad prospects. It wasn't a very good return to Brunton Park last time out. We lost that day and we were outclassed. But this time we have a stronger 11. Let's see what we can do. New year, new team. Hopefully not the same old. What a ball. Here is Kennedy. Defend this. Mariani does very well. First half and nothing really happened, unfortunately. I really wanted an eventful game this time, but EA just like, nah. Three changes at the break, Chevalier, Duffy and Russo are on. Oh, good ball through. Yes, Krav, the pressure isn't enough. And 90 minutes of bad passing from the back has finally costed us the game. Carlisle was a better side. We could not get past their midfield. 
And uh, they might they finally made us pay their hell and hopes. Good goal. Well, let's just forget about this game. Full time whistle is blown and it's 1 0 to Carlisle. Just an awful performance all around. I can't believe how Mariani, Crav and Murphy were the better players in this team, rating-wise. They could not pass the ball at all. This second team definitely felt like a second team, especially the back line. Man of the match goes to Glenn and he had the assist for Hallam Hope. And uh, our best player on the pitch for us, at least in my opinion, was McNeil. I don't understand the ratings in this game. Youth scale report available. I'm really hoping these can boost up my morale. We've got Tibor Kisseli here. Great name. Let me know how it's pronounced. I'm pretty sure it's that way, but it might be different. Let me know in the comments. Augustin Skalicki, though, he's only 15, so we can't use him right now. Reject. Second youth scout report available from Australia and some really good gems here. Wow, four over 90 potential players. Got Harvey Harris first, 42 to 58. He's a defender. Good valuation. We're going to sign you up. Then Connor Price, 48 to 64 overall, six for 70 to 94 potential. Definitely sign you up. We've got two 15-year-olds here, Max Cook with the best name out of the two. 71 to 94 potentially, 6-1. Think he's going to turn out to be a very good youth prospect. Reese White would be a good centre-back. Let's sign him up for now. And the last out of the three from Denmark. Got two players from Denmark here, August Mortensen, 68 to 92. Doesn't look that impressive, and he's short. Especially for a wing back, that is poor. Jens Madsen, it's 5'10, but he doesn't look any better. I'm gonna pass on both. Let's have a look at the new players. Harvey Harris is a defensive minded left back, he's 55 overall, 5'11. He is in, we need him right now. Same with Connor Price, 55 overall, defensive minded, but he is a right back. And uh, finally, the third player that can be promoted right now is Tibor Kisseli. What a name. He's a 54 overall technically gifted right midfielder. Then Reese White is a CDM, but he's a physically strong CDM. And so he can play centre back. We'll keep him for now, see how his potential range. We'll see how his potential develops in the academy. Same with Max Cook, he's looking alright, 6 foot 1, 47. And the potential is looking tasty. Let's see how that moves forward. With the new players coming in, I think it's time for a squad report. Sebastian Lacroix, I'm gonna place him on the transfer list. 56 overall, gone up by eight. Going off goalkeepers for now. Yannick Malle, overall of 64, gonna buy two, an exciting prospect. Ian Murphy, overall of 65, gonna buy one. Doesn't have potential status, interestingly. Liam McNeil, overall of 63, gonna buy two. Connor Price, overall of 55, can only play right back, which is a shame. And the weak point still will just tell you why. I think I'm gonna play in centre back. That's where it makes the most sense to play. If he doesn't turn up in the games, I'm definitely gonna sell him. Giuseppe Mariani, overall of 49, gonna buy two. Michelle Gallo, overall of 58, gonna buy three. Alexander Krav, overall of 60, gonna buy seven. Jeremy Redenton, overall of 57, gonna buy four. Morgan Lewis, overall of 60. Harvey Harris, overall of 55. Can play either left back or right back, which is much better than his counterpart. And he is 3 star, 3 star. 5 for 11, though, no, slightly shorter. Valerio Guidi, overall of 59, gonna buy one. Timora Kisseli, overall of 54, can only play right in the field, unfortunately. Right footed, 3 star, 3 star, that's alright. The work rates are fine. Good pace, agility, and balance, and some good technicals as well there, which I like. Looking promising. Let's see how he does the proper game. Peter Farrell, overall of 56, gonna buy one. Thomas O'Byrne, overall of 47, gonna buy two. Bruno Chumacero, overall of 54, gonna buy four. Antonio Santoro, overall of 55, gonna buy one. Mikkel Svensson, overall of 53. Camille Pacorni, overall of 55, gonna buy one. Nicola Russo, overall of 52. Brian Duffy, overall of 53. Dylan Brennan, overall of 52. Dominic Baker, overall of 49, gonna buy one. 
Gabriele Ferrari overall of 46, gonna buy two. Christophe Chevalier overall of 51, gonna buy two. Philip Erskard overall of 56, gonna buy one. We've got a kit upgrade coming shortly for him after this squad report. And to finish it off, we've got the Scout Future Stars, the Fonda Fresn, overall of 64, gonna buy four. Here is the kit upgrade for Philip Erskard. Very good choice of number, I must say, long live part back. I was gonna change it anyway from Dylan Brennan. He's now wearing the number 22, which Erskard previously wear. And looking very nice, the customization. Don't know what it is, but many people have submitted boxing tape. These are the only new balance boots I have. And fortunately enough, they are white. Looking quite nice, and I do like the new balance boots. Fourth and final game of this episode, we're facing third bottom crew Alexandra at home this time. Standing line upon screen is the first team side with a couple of debuts. Kisley and Harris are filling the right hand side of the defense. I'm also debuting Erstgaard's customization here. The other change, O'Burn, is in for Chumacera, who's quite tired from last game. EFL League 2 action here live from the Glow Arena, and we are hosting Perry NG's Crew Alexandra. We are still the lowest scoring team of the league. It's a play that will never evade us. O'Burn, back. Here is Gallo. Trying to work out a way to line up the shot. It's a good effort. Oh my word! The finesse shots are so overpowered. Michelle Gallo has found the back of the net from out of nowhere, just trying to get the shot off. That is one of the best goals you'll ever see this season. And just about ducks out of the way there, Kisley. Very nice. It does the keeper as well. Probably didn't see it in time to dive. And that is half time. It's 1 0 at the break. Not much happened after the goal, even though we've pressed Crow Alexandra holding strong, even without Perry NG. Still don't know why they didn't start him. So, three changes at the break Baker, Pokorny, and Price, the new kid from the Youth Academy, are start. I've pushed Harris to right midfield because he's right footed and he's the shortest out of the two. The new kids are holding on really well. I'm really impressed with them. Let's see if they can carry on like this. Crosses in, McNeil with a brave save. First guard. Can they hang on to this? Baker through, Gallo puts it to Brennan. He is wide open. Can he finish the game off? Too powerful and over the crossbar. Catch it, McNeil. Very well played. And that is full time. It's 1-0. To Morecambe. We hold on to the onslaught. All in all, we were the better side throughout the 90 minutes and we deserve to score more than one goal. Both teams deserve to score more. The shots, there were many more attacks than the shots there. Undoubtedly, the man of the match goes to Michelle Gallo with that curling belter in the post. Beautiful. Very good performance and Crew Alexandra, that's what you get for not starting Perry NG. Transfer offer for Sebastian Lacroix. Now we've already have enough squad depth that we don't need to play keepers outfield. And we've got enough keepers that are better than him. And because he also doesn't have any potential and it's over his valuation, I'm going to accept. Lacroix is sold to the Chinese club that wanted him. And we've received 35k from the deal. So I'm going to leave you with the league table. We've climbed up to 20th. But Cheltenham Town do have the game in hand. We are closing in on the ones above us. And now with the new players coming in. And with the 15-year-olds in the academy who are going to turn 16 shortly. I'm feeling much more confident about our goal of reaching 18. So, yeah. That is it for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. I'm going to see you all next time. And until then, have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.